Have you ever made a game only for the thumbnail to look horrendous? Have you ever needed to make a custom thumbnail for a Scratch game only to not know how to? Well, in this video, I will not only show you how to add a thumbnail to your Scratch project, but I will also show you how to make a good one. Let's get right into it. So, in order to make the thumbnail actually work, you need it to be able to A, when you click the flag, hide it, but when you haven't clicked the flag, it show up. To do that, we can just, when green flag clicked on the thumbnail, I have mine right here, but I'll be showing you how to make your own later in this video. Then, just in looks, grab a set color effect to, make it ghost, and make it 100. So what this is doing is if you click this, it sets it to 100, but if you click this, it immediately turns it off and makes it show again. That's because color effects only work when the flag is clicked, and they don't work when you've clicked the stop sign, just like clones. Set ghost effect to 100, and then go to front layer. And bam, that is all you need. So if you were to have a game here, click the flag, play it normally, as soon as you stop, it goes here. So bam, then if you were to exit, you would see, that's the thumbnail, and that's what you would see when you load up the game. Now, how do you even go about making a thumbnail that looks good? Well, there isn't one way to do it, but you just want to highlight the major parts of the game. To give you some ideas, here's a time lapse of me making a thumbnail for a generic platformer. We just hit 1,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. Our next goal is to get 1,500 by 2023. Even though it's not that good, it still delivers the message and gets people's attention. And that is all a thumbnail is supposed to do. In fact, a thumbnail is probably the reason why you clicked on this video. Thank you guys for watching, that's all for me today, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>